Good day, viewers. Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're watching Open Studio right here on Cape Town TV. My name is Danny Kamwa. I've got an amazing lady with me in the studio. Goes by the name of Margaret from an organization called the Trauma Unit. All right, she's here to speak to us a little bit more about the, the organization and what they are doing to help with trauma, violence, and abuse within our community. So, Margaret, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. So, I believe you are the executive director of the organization. Yes, I started in the middle of the pandemic um, at the Trauma Center. It's quite, it's been quite a journey this year with what everybody has been through. But I feel really blessed to be part of this organization and also the long history it has to with dealing with trauma in this country. Oh wow! And you, I mean, you mentioned that you you started during the pandemic. Yes. Oh, how has that been for you? <laughs> yes, um, we. We decided not to stay at home because we found that contacting clients it, it was not effective. People probably people didn't have data, people didn't have um, the phones were sometimes off. Sometimes when you phone one of your clients, they would put off the phone because there's a lot of people around and they're not comfortable to talk. Um, especially in cases of gender based violence, you know, then the perpetrator is probably also in the home. Um, so we decided let's let's come to the office, let's go out to the community. And then what we did is because our normal spaces where we operate from, for example, the police station, they were closed a lot of times because of people being getting infected when they closed the whole police station. So what we did is we went where we could find people, and that was our healing team. So we went there to promote our service, to talk to people, to do awareness on COVID, on prevention of COVID-19, um, about how to distribute pamphlets and also support. We also donated a bit of uh, items too, like masks and food that we could also collect in, uh, in, within our circles to these feeding schemes. So that's, that's a, what we've done. And it, it was quite um, challenging because, you know, even our staff, some got sick and then we had to close down for a bit and open. But we are really blessed that nobody has got anything left over from having been ill. Um, and everybody is healthy and everybody's fully recovered. And there's now been two months now that nobody's been sick. So we, we must just keep it like that. <laughs> All of us in Cape Town in South Africa. <laughs> No, I'm glad. I'm glad that there is such good news, you know, from the organization, so that you are able to go out there and do your work at the best of your ability. So, tell us what exactly does the organization do? So, the, the organization's name is it's got a long name, but it, it's in a way descriptive. It's the Trauma Center for Survivors of Violence and Torture. So, what we do is we we work in community to counsel people who have been experiencing trauma in their lives, children and adults. So we've got two units. We've got a, a, a unit that works with violence and gender-based violence and with adults, and then a unit working with children. And then we also have a learning center where we actually, we've got wonderful programs um, that's been developed by this organization over the years that we share with other organizations and volunteers. For example, we've got a trauma support workers training program and a trauma bereavement program, especially focused on how to assist children who has been through severe loss and trauma in their lives. So that we do, we, we, we train social auxiliary workers, social workers and volunteers in order to strengthen the knowledge base in our community with stakeholders on how to deal with trauma. Because we are really a specialist organization focusing very much on trauma and, 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 and what, it, what to do, um, how to best support victims of trauma. I know some people talk of victims, but in our name you can hear we say survivors because we believe with support people can move on and they can overcome the the the, the, the Im impact of trauma in the life. Wow! So you mentioned that the organization deals with um, violence and torture, right? So you know that's also one of the things that 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 stood out during the time of the pandemic. Yeah. So tell us, you know, within your organization, what sort of violence and torture did you guys encounter? You know, um, violence has is the difference between violence and torture 
was to explain, I also um, got to understand that fully when working at Former Center. Torture has to do with violence uh, and abuse that's inflicted by state organizations on uh, communities. Is that in, in with regard to service delivery? Or? Yes, but also, for instance, in the lockdown, we had very strict regulations, and sometimes people reported that the way they were treated by the police, um, they were maybe in, uh, assaulted while being on the streets. Uh, and you know, we've had situations where women would not go to the police station to report violence because they were afraid that they would be attacked by by police on the streets going out and it's locked down. So you can't go to the police station because to report the violence happening at home. So that kind of thing. I, I know you, I don't know if you remember on social media, there were those very tragic inst instances of people who were removed by, by uh, officials from, from their homes. And there was these, these tragic um, situations where people's dignity were really severely compromised in, 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 in that process of people being removed from illegal occupation. And the way it was done, you know, it was quite traumatizing for us who, who got to see it on social media. I don't want to be too specific, but I'm sure the, list, the, the viewers would remember those instances. And some of those victims came to us and we could could console them and we could contain the, 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 the emotions that they experienced from that and give them advice how to go forward in dealing with this event that happened to them. So, and, and we, we, we are, I'm really proud of the staff at the trauma center. The people who visit us, they actually have very good feedback that they actually feel that relief. Yes, they feel relief from what happened to them. They feel they come, the one person who came in, you know, the people who brought the, um, brought him, this, who's been um, um, uh, tortured um, throughout, through this lockdown, the people who brought him actually said that it's the first time they see him smile. Oh, wow. When he came out of, uh, from our service. Oh, wow. And, wow. Um, we're just going to take, we're going to take a short break, um, to play Mar Mar Margaret. Thank you very much. For, for, for the information and for those watching at home, I hope you stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back. You're watching Open Studio right here on Cape Town TV. My name is Danny Kambo. I've got Margaret with me in studio from an amazing organization called the Trauma Unit. All right, we just spoke a little bit about her background and how she got involved in the organization and what they are doing to help you know people within the community tackle violence and torture. All right, so Margaret, once again, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, before the break, we, we spoke a little about you know the difference between violence and, and, and torture. You know, you got into uh, details speaking about torture just to continue with that, with that conversation you spoke about a young man that was brought into the organization and it was said that it was the first time he smiled yeah. yes after the incident that happened to him um, then you know that torture is state inflicted we're also a member of the international um the irct the international council for rehabilitation of victims of torture so we are involved with them. They recently have had an international conference on Zoom. It was quite interesting to meet up with people from Philippines, South America, North America, other places in Africa, in Europe, where, where people have, have experienced this kind of stuff. And like in South Africa, it's, it's, it's obviously, it's been very much prevalent during apartheid system. And that's really where the trauma center started dealing with victims of torture, with political prisoners and activists that's been tortured by the apartheid government. And the, the, the trauma center was also very much involved with the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission and supporting all of the people who have experienced trauma through what's happened in, in, in our country, in our, in our tragic history. Um, violence is, is if you look at violence, torture specifically, state violence is, is 
what what happens when somebody assaults you? Um, it gender-based violence is a specific form of that. Per, personal person-to-person -person violence. Violence can also be underlying and not so visible. You know, we we talk about structural violence. Um, being poor is being a, a victim of structural violence. There's a, a person who grows up without the resources that they need to really live a dignified life and not access to support where they need support. That's actually uh, structural violence that's, uh, that's inflicted on that person. Um, so we, we have to look holistically when we talk about violence. It's easy just to say, you know, these people are fighting this community, there's a lot of gun violence, but well, what's the root causes of that? Where does it come from? And how can, can that be addressed? Um, we don't have all the answers, but, but definitely it's, 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 it's definitely in our organization, we talk more and more on that because, you know, in order to deal with all the uh, survivors of trauma, it just increases. And where, where is it going to end? When are we going to start looking at how to prevent the trauma from happening? Because actually that is what we need to do. Exactly. Wow. And one of the things that you mentioned now was um, domestic and gender-based violence. Yes. Apologies. That is one of the, the, the horrible things that's happening right now within our country and in, in the world. And you mentioned um, that that is one of the challenges people face during the pandemic because they cannot go and report it because of the, the torture you know, of the torture part of it where the police were outside and so forth. So how has the, the violence part of, you know, of society, how you, have you guys been able to handle? You know what, we, we provide support to the victims. We, um, in, the, in, um, in our program, our victim empowerment program, we give information sessions to people about how to go about to get a, a protection order. If you are, you happen to be a victim of gender-based violence, what what is the steps that you can take? What is your rights as a as a victim of violence? Um, there's a victims charter that says you have a right to, to be supported. You know, you have a right to to information, and often our our communities are not they're not informed on what their rights. So we really play an important role. The communities we, we currently are quite active is, is, is Manenberg, Delft, Cryfontein, and then also Born to Evil Langa area. Um, we are not the only organization that provides trauma support. There's in, in the other areas, there's other organizations, organizations like Mozo Youth and Rape Crisis. Those are organizations who also deliver trauma support services. So yeah, we, we, we support people in those communities with, with, with counseling, also training information sessions and supporting children at schools being, of course now it's quite difficult to get into schools, but we, we go where we find children organizations working with children yeah. and we deliver services to children that way. Wow, so what would you say, Margaret, within your experience of being part of the organization, is the leading or one of the main causes of the gender-based violence? It's very interesting. This, uh, uh, recently, there's been a study that's been done uh, in South Africa, and one of the drivers of gender-based violence with perpetrators is childhood trauma. That that actually sometimes we we want to make the the perpetrator as as this this, this, this almost want to say bad person is doing all these bad things, but. You know, inside of that perpetrator is a young boy who has been abused, who has been neglected, who didn't get a nice, a good word towards them when they were growing up, and and we often forget about that. And it, it's time for us also to heal those wounds, to give people the opportunity to to, to look, to, to to talk about their trauma. And we've we've also recently we've been involved with a gender reconciliation and th those kind of programs increasingly will do in communities where we can heal communities, heal people's gender perceptions and attitudes because really those things, sometimes it comes from somewhere and we, we, we want to always blame somebody, that person is bad, they're doing all these things, but 
not thinking where it comes from. Um, just to want to give you a short story. One of my co um, colleagues, that she had a, a, a gender based violence a victim, a survivor came, coming for support, and who said her husband was very abusive towards her. And the social worker asked for the husband to come in, and he, he broke down crying over his trauma that he's experienced as a child. And after the session, the woman came back and said she has a dream husband now. He used to be this abuser, but now he's a person who is really so supportive. When he uncovered and healed his own trauma, he, he became a actually yes, yeah, so he became <laughs> actually this model husband. Wow. So it just shows what yeah. can be done if you if you get help. If you get help, there we go. And there's many out there that needs the help. But thank you so much. For, put, for giving that information and putting it out there. We're going to take another short break, Margaret. When we come back, then we go a little bit more deeper into our conversation. So for those that's watching at home, do not go anywhere. We'll be back after this. All right, guys, welcome back. You're watching Open Studio right here on Cape Town TV. I'm Danny Cumboy. I've got Margaret with me in studio who's from an amazing organization called the Trauma Unit. All right, we spoke a little bit about, or a lot a bit, <laughs> about violence, trauma, and torture, which are some of the things that's really, really hurting our society right now. And Margaret is here to shed some light into it and as to how you can get help, you know, from these organizations, men and women putting their lives out there to try and help you. So, Margaret, uh, just to continue with our conversation, we spoke about uh, trauma, we spoke about violence, we spoke about um, torture, you know, so narrowing it down to violence as being one of the leading causes of heartaches within our society, you know, we mentioned gender-based violence, but then there's uh, violence against people of LGBT, you know, and recently we had xenophobic attacks, you know, how has this violent or trauma you know, have you guys been experiencing such things within your organization as well? Yes, we, we work with everybody who experiences trauma. So in terms of gender-based violence, sometimes we just think of women uh, when we think of gender. But gender is really your gender identification. And it's, it's violence is inflicted of you based on your on gender roles. Um, that also includes L, B, G, T. I Q I plus. I think oh, wow. um, I don't try to be, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, up with how, how uh, what we're talking about these days. And it's a lot of things that it includes. Um, so obviously, you know, violence is that it's inflicted on people because of their gender identification and because of of how they their identity. Um, we definitely get those cases, and then it's it's it's, it's tragic what people have to go through just being themselves and trying to just find a way of, of, of living their lives. Um, so yes, we definitely support people who are, who, are, who are any person who experience violence based on their gender. And then xenophobia, I mean, we, we always look back at two, 2008 when we had all these all the, the xenophobic attacks and trauma center was very much involved in that time but still you you, you get that people who are refugees from other countries are easy targets for violence uh, they are often trying to make a living they don't get government support so they have to run little businesses and those businesses are a target um, especially now in this time with a pandemic that really had a big impact on the economy here in the Western Cape. It causes that that gangs target people who are still earning money and um, people who are refugees who have little businesses, they stand out and they are often targeted and they feel vulnerable. They, fit, they go report to the police but they feel if you point out Who's done it to us? Will be, we don't have really support from from the broader society. So we we would rather be quiet and try and avoid this violence than than standing up and say these are the people who've done it to us. So in that way, it's, it's actually very tragic 
what's happening to people currently in, in the current climate, um, the, um, the refugees. We, we also um, are going to do a program with, with youth, uh, refugee children and South African youth together, see how we can get to heal also this pain in our society, the fact that there's uh, this, this competition and this actually very tragic to see that yeah. people are suffering, people who actually have been suffering where they come from and then they have to suffer here with them. Yeah, and I mean it's about shaping the minds of the young ones, you know, because they will be the leaders and when they grow up they will be the ones who stop this violence. I mean, when you mentioned 2008, that, that, that year is very close to my heart because even myself and my family were victims mm -hmm. of xenophobic attack. You know, so it is quite tragic. But if there are anyone out there uh, that wants to get help from you, you know, come to your organization, you know, what kind of services can we expect there? So what, what we do is, you know, we, we help, obviously, you know, people coming into our, from our centers, coming to us, have high levels of anxiety. So we help to cultivate coping mechanisms just to bring down anxiety. It's very hard for you to make clear and good decisions for your life and to go forth and to find solutions for problems if you are absolutely overcome by the trauma, by the anxiety. So we do various things. We teach people breathing techniques. We help people to understand what's happening to them, that, that what they're feeling is not abnormal, it's a normal response. And then to, to that people cannot feel, sometimes people are very overcome by, oh, there's something wrong with me, I can't function. So yes, you're going through a normal thing, it's, it's okay, and just to be there and support them. And to help them also with practical issues. Often we, we, we can't actually get to the counseling of the emotions because we are getting, helping people to be safe, we're helping them to navigate the justice system, issues with cases that's not being resolved. So we also become like an advocate for individual people coming to us to help to resolve and to move forward with the, the cases that's, that they actually open yeah. at, at police. Wow. So how do we get hold of you? And you, know, you mentioned that you're based in, in, in the police stations. Hmm? Yeah, so how can we get a hold of you if, if we want to come out and, and seek your services? So we work in specific areas. So we, we, are, we go, to, if people can find us at Delft Police Station, we are now regularly, regularly there on a, on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Um, we also go to Cryfontaine, we are there on a Thursday. We are Wednesdays, we are in Bonte, Langa area. Um, and then uh, in Langa, we are at the, at the community center. And in Bonte, we also at the community center there. So people can also see us at our offices in Woodstock. We are in Chapel Street, 126 Chapel Street. People can phone us. I can give the numbers. Can I give the numbers? Oh, you can give the numbers, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, our landline is 021. 465 7373. Okay. 465 7373. And we also have a WhatsApp number. Okay. So people can WhatsApp us because often people don't have access to landlines. It's too expensive. Yeah. So a lot of people are comfortable with WhatsApp. 021. Oh, oh, 021. No, um, back to the landline. Sorry. 066 yeah. 703 7023. Yeah. Oh, it's easy to remember. Yeah, I'll go to 0667037023. I always like to make a little riddle of it. <laughs> and yeah, so definitely. Yeah. And then also we are on Facebook. Okay. You, you can look for the Trauma Center for Survivors of Violence and Torture mm. and give us a message. We respond. You will respond. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you for coming through and chatting to us. For those that's watching at home, thank you for being part of this conversation. Guys, the end of the show from the Cape Town TV crew, myself. Bye-bye. Till next time. See ya.